Hi, Tile from Interfidelity here. Today we're going to talk about a very, very nice headphone, the Odyssey LCD X planar magnetic headphone. This is a $1,600 headphone. And to talk about it, we're going to have to talk about the, their whole line of headphones because they've been changed somewhat recently uh, and it's, it's worth revisiting the entire lineup and uh, the context in which the LCD X exists relative to that lineup and some of the other headphones here. Um, uh, really fortunate to get the chance to work with some of the equipment I do and um, so I'll quickly point out uh, this is the Apex uh, um, Hi-Fi Audio Teton amplifier. It's a output transformerless tube amp designed by Pete Millett. Um, it's a five thousand dollar amplifier and I brought it in for this test because the most recent LCD3 now has a higher output or a higher input impedance uh, or a higher impedance at 110 ohms and uh, begins to work well with uh, the higher output impedance as a tube amp. So I actually did some tube amp playing around with here and of course my trusty Oralic Taurus Mark II and Oralic Vega DAC over here for uh, the main comparison duties. Uh, I spent some time with um, the LCD-X and the recent uh, LCD-3 and LCD-2, which is this one, um, all of which now have the phaser. Now, uh, in a planar magnetic headphone, the magnets are a fairly large structure to either side of the diaphragm and uh, oppose a, an acoustic uh, impedance problem for the diaphragm. And uh, I've seen artifacts over time uh, that appear to come from uh, this uh, obstruction that these large magnet structures have in place. And Odyssey has recently um, designed a patent pending uh, acoustic impedance matching device that goes on the outside of each side of the magnetic structure of their drivers. Uh, they call them the phaser and uh, it ma helps to get rid of some of the problems. I'm going to put a little drawing in here uh, on the, in the uh, video and you can see in this drawing that with the phaser that has all those little points on it, um, it allows the, uh, the sound to escape um, and come together nicely whereas without this phaser uh, there's more chance of interference. Now this is a, that's a crude drawing, but it should give you some of the idea of what this phaser is. Um, and then uh, also I'll, I'll put up a picture at this point of a phaser. You can see that it's that uh, bumpy um, set of uh, slots that now look like little um, guided wave areas. Uh, on their driver and that now is on all of the LCD headphones uh, both the LCD X, the LCD 2, the LCD 3 and the LCD XC which I'm not going to talk about here today. Um, I did receive some LCD 2 and LCD 3 headphones just prior to the phase uh, the, the change to the phaser and have taken measurements of that and many of the previous uh, Odyssey headphones uh, Odyssey LCD headphones and uh, I'll put up an image now of the their 300 hertz square waves and you can see that at the leading part of the square wave there's a little overshoot blip and on the headphones that don't have the phasers there's a second smaller blip and it's my belief that these blips get in the way of imaging and that the phasers if you can look at the, the the square waves with the phasers, that second blip is dramatically reduced or gone entirely. And uh, what I heard on these headphones with the phasers was an improvement in the imaging due to a more precise leading edge uh, of the of transient waveforms, I believe. Uh, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it at the moment. Um, let's see, let's get right down to the headphones here. So this is the uh, LCD X. It has a aluminum uh, body on it as opposed to the wood of the other headphones. This headphone is significantly more efficient than the other headphones 
and uh, was designed to make it easier to connect these headphones to whatever source you had. Um, Odyssey perceives these as a good pro headphone, and I do too, with the addition of the phaser and the better transient response, cleaner transient response. I, I find that they provide better imaging, and they're getting closer to matching the performance in terms of that imaging and resolution to the Sennheiser HD 800s than they were in the past. The HD 800s, 800s have tremendous uh, imaging and transient resolution. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they tend to be uh, a little on the bright side for most people. And uh, well, there's a there's thousands and thousands of posts on the headphone forums about how to match the Sennheiser HD 800 with amps. In fact, I had uh, an amp in here not long ago, the ECP L2, which was a tremendous match for the HD 800. But these headphones will. Uh, play much more nicely with the upstream gear and provide a more satisfying listen really because of the the better tonality and the and the uh, the warmer sound than the HD 800s so yeah these are a great headphone for uh, a, a good headphone for um, uh, recording pl pros working in the um, the critical part areas of, uh, of listening there the HD 800 will be better for listening to very very small details but the uh, LCD X will probably be better at giving you an overall picture of uh, your music and your mix. These uh, LCD Xs also <clears throat> are, um, uh, I would call it, let's say a little drier, maybe a little more neutral than the LCD 3, which is a little bit lusher and more elegant sounding, more refined sounding headphone. Um, but the LCD X uh, slams a little bit harder. So for you audiophiles out there who are interested in more contemporary music uh, and uh, stuff with a lot of punch, um, this may be a better headphone than the LCD 3 in that regard. On the other hand, the LCD 3 um, is, uh, this is about a $1,900 headphone. This is a um, uh, more, more, resolving and uh, elegant in its presentation. It doesn't hit quite as hard in the low bass as the LCD X, uh, but it has a very, very um, refined sound to it and a lovely character. And now with 110 ohms, you can run it from uh, tube amps like the uh, Teton here um, to great effect. I had fun rolling tubes yesterday and listening to the changes which were quite apparent on the uh, LCD3 with, uh, with the new phaser. Um, just a lovely headphone. This one's up on the wall of fame and gonna stay there. Uh, the LCD X, um, still haven't quite decided. You'll have to go look at the article to see if I put it up on the wall of fame or not, but it's real close. The LCD2, um, this is about a thousand dollar headphone and um, it too is a lovely headphone. It's a little bit grainier sounding, not quite as uh, uh, resolving and refined as the uh, other two are, but it's a great, uh, still a great headphone. Lots and lots of impact in the uh, in dynamics, um, good bass response, good bass extension. Um, all of these headphones have a little bit of a res recessed presence region up between two and five K that makes them sound just a little more distant than um, some of the headphones that are have a little bit more response in that presence region. But other than that, they're um, a, a very, very fine headphone. I would say that this family of headphones is probably the most reliable performer of all the thousand dollar and up um, planar magnetic headphones anyway. Uh, and, and and certainly strong contenders in the category of high-end headphones overall. Um, there's still some great headphones out there like the $5,000 Abyss uh, AB1266 or uh, Stax SR009, um, but the LCD2s uh, at $1,000 certainly uh, begin to get you a taste of that um, high-end uh, world where there's lots of finesse and resolution. Uh, and these two have been improved by the phasers. <clears throat> um, I think that 
there's a lot in this review over an in inner fidelity more than I've been able to talk here in this video uh, and so I'd really recommend you go read the article that uh, the link is posted underneath the video here on the YouTube channel um, but uh, I highly encourage you to have a listen to Odyssey headphones sometime in the near future they really are a spectacular listening experience and um, uh, I, I absolutely recommend each one of these headphones in its category um, and certainly the LCD 3s uh, are one of my favorite headphones of all time in terms of their um, lovely relaxed and warm and resolving presentation so lots of fun there anyway the the article is a good read and and much more than I could possibly put in a short video review so I hope you go take a look at it uh, alright until next time um, I'm gonna spend some more time here at this twenty thousand dollars worth of uh, audiophile toys I got on my desk and do some more listening and I hope you get a chance to hear some of these soon too